Hello, everybody. I have four o'clock. I'm going to give it just another minute because I still see some quite a few people joining us. So we'll get started exactly at 401. Thank you for joining today. All righty, my iPhone shows 401, um, my work iPhone. So let's go ahead and get started. Thank you everybody for joining us today. Lindsay, I think you got the slides, so thank you. This is our EVV public forum for November that is specific to case management. So I just wanna stop here and let folks know that if they are on, for if they're a traditional provider or they are a member or they are a key stakeholder or an advocate, you are welcome to stay on the line today. All of our town halls are public and open, um, but I do wanna let you know that it is going to be targeted specifically to case management and only case management today. I'm Brian Dowd. I'm the Deputy Executive Director over Policy operations and compliance. We've been doing these town halls since November of last year. So this is my 13th round of town halls that we've been doing associated with EVB. I'm very thankful for you all joining us, especially on a Tuesday preceding um, Thanksgiving. It's really important that we continue to get your support and input and questions. So thank you very much for joining us today. Next slide. Uh, we always start every presentation with the mission of the Georgia Department of Community Health, which is to uh, provide Georgians with access to affordable quality health care through effective planning, purchasing, and oversight. So what are we going to go over today? We're going to do a case management function overview, case management function demo, and then a Q&A. And here is the very exciting part. You're not going to have to hear from me much today or very, very little. I'm very, very excited about that. We're going to hear um, from Lindsay Mack primarily. And thank you very, very much, Brian, for that uh, introduction. And welcome, everybody. This, As Brian said, this is the main case management town hall for Georgia. I'm going to be walking you through um, just some high-level functionality for case management, and we will open the floor to questions at the end of the presentation. Case management. So just for a, a high level overview of what we're gonna go over today, we have case management functionality. It includes a view only access to the following data for linked Medicaid members. Case managers will be able to view the schedule, visits and prior authorization detail for the members in which they serve. They will also, the case management admins will have access to reporting tools for recipients visits. The visits completed, not pre-scheduled, visit detail and visit report. Uh, case management admins as well as case managers will be able to send and receive messages to and from aides and caregivers using the NetSmart Mobile Caregiver Plus app, and I will show you how to do that as well. I'm about to do a live demonstration. We are going to be in a demo environment, so don't worry. There's no PHI going across this town hall. Um, all the names, you may even see some silly ones, so be prepared. Um, but we will be going over the admin access and what that entails, as well as the case manager access. For admins specifically, I'm going to walk you through how to register, we're going to do a dashboard overview, how to link your case managers to the recipients, and a couple of the different reporting functionalities available to you. For the case managers, I'm going to show you just the dashboard view only overview, uh, the messaging feature, and we'll do a brief use case review if we have time at the end. And at this point, bear with me while I kind of switch screens here. Gonna pull you over. Can someone please confirm? Can you all see the main TELUS page? Sure can, thank you. Excellent, okay. So we're gonna start with the registration process. 
So for each case management agency, you're going to want to des designate one main case management admin. And I want to stress that you want one main case management admin, because if you have more than one and both of you try and register your agency, it can cause some headaches down the road. So pick one person to be your main case management admin, and you're going to come to this page here, the foretellus.com. You don't even have to slash resources. It'll automatically bring you here. And because we are sitting in Georgia, you're going to click on Georgia GCH. That will bring you to the main Georgia page. And it, we, there's some information here, just general EVV information, how to um, register, a couple different resources for you for support down here, which we will go over again later. And once you're at this sheet, you are going to click register. And obviously we're not going to do a full registration here because we don't wanna mess with the system, but to register, you're going to need to have your tax ID, your payer provider ID and your zip code. Once you have input that information here, you're going to do the proof that you are not a robot and submit. From there, it will send you a welcome email with the following steps to completely register your agency. It's pretty simple. Um, you should get that welcome email you know, within a couple of minutes. If for some reason you don't, you can go back to that initial page here and contact the Conduit Call Center and we can troubleshoot for you, but we haven't had that issue so far. So once you are registered, and bear with me because once you're in display mode, that toolbar up top makes it difficult to navigate. Um, once you're in, once you are registered, you are going to go to your main link for signing in. Here we go. And it automatically signs me in. That was pretty quick. <laughs> Um, if you saw, it's just a basic login page. If you've ever had access to any kind of portal, you put in your username, which you get through the registration process and your password and you sign in. And there's also an option there. If you forget your password or if your password has expired, you can utilize the forgot my password tool there. And that can walk you through the steps, reset your password, very similar to any other portal you've ever been a part of. It would send you an email to reset your password. Any, well, actually, let's go ahead and save questions for the end. I think that would be um, a little easier. So we are gonna go on through to your dashboard overview. So when you first log in, this is gonna be what you see. You'll have um, the Mobile Caregiver Plus app logo. If you wanna view it in English, if you are primarily a Spanish speaker, you can select this button here and switch it to Spanish. Um, if you are, if you are a part of more than one agency and you registered more than one, you'd be able to select the other ones here. Um, if you have multiple roles, if you're a case manager admin as well as a caregiver, you could use this drop down here and you would have your other option um, for caregiver down below and you can switch between the two. You can also do things within your profile from this drop down here. Um, that's if you have to update any kind of contact information or I think you can add a photo to your profile. There's a couple different things in that, in that area that could be useful. Um, but your main landing page here has a wealth of information to begin with. Um, if you notice, it automatically populates, I believe the current week, but if you're interested in previous data, you can pull up last week, this week, just today, and just get a brief overview about what your membership is doing at that time. Um, so I think we had visits, yes. And just keep in mind, this is a demo environment. So anything that you're seeing, it was put in for a test case purpose. Um, most likely your dashboard is gonna have numbers in all of these little tabs here. Um, but you can see, you can view number of visits that you have in progress, number of visits during whatever date range you have selected that were unable to be completed, missed visits, any visits that haven't started during this date range, not started late, in progress, visits that had been completed or visits that had been completed late. So it's pretty self-explanatory to that point what each of those tabs means, but if you wanna see it in a different me method, you can scroll down a little bit farther and view it in this um, nice little chart form, or you can view it in a table. So depending on what you're using the information for, you can change your dashboard in a way that you can utilize it to the best of, of your efficiencies of what you're doing. The other piece that you see right here on your landing page is the inbox tool. This houses any messages that you're having between you and your caregivers or your case managers, I apologize. Um, this is just one that we have internally back and forth. Hey, Lindsay, message me back when you get access. 
you can send messages and we'll get more into those details later on between you and your case managers. Um, you know, if your case manager realized that there's one of the members needs a different resource available, they can send messages using this method here. The next tab on your main functioning tool here to the left is the schedule tab. You can view a nice overview of the schedule that you have going on for all the membership that you're in charge of. Um, you can sort by member or user, user being the caregivers. So right here, we can see that the caregiver, Ragu, has two, two overlapping schedules here. That's not what you wanna see, but they're testing for some reason. You're able to view by the month in this calendar format, if that's helpful, or you're able to go by the week and see what that particular user has going for the week. You can also go by a specific day. You can use these navigation tools up top to switch between days and weeks here, or you can just view today. So again, if, if we had more detail loaded in this environment, then that would be, there you go. So you can see just a high level eyeball view of what's going on this month for the membership within your care. Also, if you want to specify down to a specific member or a specific caregiver, you can search using their name in this function here. I don't know in this environment if we can, but in regular production environment, you will be able to search by member name or caregiver name and pull up that specific information here. That another point to rise is that all of the member and caregiver information is auto-populated into the tool for you directly from DCH. So there is nothing that you'll have to do to have this load. The next tab that you have access to is the full visit report. And it, the visit report, because it houses a lot more data, does take a couple extra seconds. You can get a wealth of information from this visit report. Um, you can use these filters up top here if you want to really zero in on a specific member or a specific payer. Right now, the only payer you have an option for is GCH, but in the future, it's possible we'll have some CMOs added here, but you can break out your business depending on how, depending on what you're using it for, or you can pull up one specific member, a specific caregiver. You can pull them up based on agency. So if you have one agency you're looking for, um, if you know for a fact that you have a visit ID that you're looking into, you can enter that there, visit status. If you want to see all of the completed visits during a certain time frame, you can do a pre-filter up here and sort your data down here. Again, you can, you can alter the date range. That'll just bring your filters down to a more specified point and your visit to claim status. So if you want to see your visits that were submitted over for claims, that's a different filter you could use. Once you're down here in the visit details section, you can obviously see the visit ID. The agency will populate here. The personal support aid or the caregiver name will, will populate here. The member information, the procedure code, the scheduled start and end time, and then the actual clock in time and date and clock out time and date. So as you can see, this particular visit did not occur. It's listed as a missed visit under your visit status. Visit status detail, um, they didn't put in a, a detail, it was just a missed visit. Your payer information, as well as visit to claim status. If you wanna get even deeper into detail on these visits, you can expand more details by clicking on the, the three dots on the side. That will open up more visit detail on the visit detail screen. For this one in particular, I wanted to open it because as you could see, it was an unable to complete. We had a visit status that it was unable to complete. And, and on this screen is where you'll see why it was an, unable to complete. For visit status, they're unable to complete because they were unable to staff that visit. So for use case, if you have one particular member who's complaining about never getting the care that they've been authorized for, you can log into this dashboard here. You can pull up that particular member and you notice, oh, well, this particular agency is unable to staff this member consistently, you know, six times in the first three weeks of November. What are we going to do about that? Maybe as a case manager, you would want to move that member to a different agency or outreach to that agency and ask, you know, what's the disconnect here? Why is this member not getting the care they've been authorized for? 
So there's a couple different uses for this information, um, but we think that it's very important that you all have it. And the best part about it is it's in real time. So if you have visits that are occurring today, then you can pull up the visit detail. You could see if they had that visit today. And you could, if not, you can see that reason code for why they didn't have that visit today. You're also able to pull up the task section, which is just the HIC fit code here in Georgia, and the scheduled time and the actual time. Again, this one did not occur, so we don't have actual time. You can see the verification mode and the scheduled address. Hey, Lindsay, we had one question come across that I think if we clarified, uh, it says when you discuss visits that the, the, care, the case managers will be able to see, those are the visits that, that are being provided by the community living support provider. So those Medicaid providers, that's correct? Yes. Okay, so just checking or, that one. Or personal support provider, whichever one you're a case manager for, that's correct. Perfect, thank you, Brian. And then the second question I have for you, Lindsay, you're talking about visits in real time. Is that for um, providers using the NetSmart solution and those using third parties, or will it be primarily real time for those providers using NetSmart? And it might be on a slight delay if they're using a third party. So it depends on how often the third party sending visit data, they are supposed to, I believe hourly, um, okay. you will get real time for NetSmart users. Um, there may be a slight delay, like you said, for third party, but it should be, it should be fairly real time regardless of their input per uh, source. Perfect, thank you. Sure. Um, let's see, anything else? Um, another thing to mention about this visit tab here and most of the reports that you'll find, if you hover over, let's see, there you go. If you hover over the header pieces up here and you notice a little arrow pops up, that means that is a sortable field. So if you click on there, oh, we may have timed me out, but we'll see. Yeah, that timed me out, but that's okay. We were just talking for too long. Um, Again, this is a demo environment, so bear with me. But if you are, I'll wait for it to load. Here we go. If you hover over any of the headers and those little arrows right there, if you can see that, if that appears there, that means that is sortable data. And if it is useful for the purpose of you being in the tool to sort it by date, you can click on that and it will auto sort that for you. Again, in a demo environment, I'm not sure, I don't wanna kick myself out again, so I'm not going to do it right now. Um, but in the production environment, you can click here and it will sort it for you. Um, most of the other reports, you can sort alphabetically by names as well, if that's helpful to you. But most helpful, I believe, if you're looking to sort by name, it would be to search for your particular member up here and then just have their visits pulled. All right, Brittany, do you see anything else? Because I can't really see the chat box while I'm presenting. Anything else pertinent that we should address now before we move on? No, ma'am. So far, so good. All right, great. So the next tab that you all will have access to is the prior authorization tab. Um, this is going to give you a nice overview of the PAs that you have available to view. You're going to select your payer. Again, for right now, it's just going to be Georgia DCH, but eventually we're hoping to have the CMOs involved as well. But if you know that you're looking for your DCH members, you select that payer. And similar to the last tab, and you guys, I will sound like a broken record throughout this process, because we try to streamline the way that things are set up to, for ease of use for you all. So we have these fields up here, just like before, where you can select the different aspects of what you're searching for and filter down for ease of use. So if you want to pull all of your authorizations for whatever reason that are for, you know, personal care T T1019, then you would select that and it would sort it for you. If you already know the author number you're looking for and you don't want to parse through all the way down and page over, you can put your authorization number in there. You can search just by member, just like before. You can scroll this way or you can type in. Let's see if we want carry. It will sort for you. There we go. And you can pull just by member. If you want to search just by modifier, um, you can do that as well or just by authorization status. So let's say you want to pull all new authorizations that are in your system, all updated, all invalid or all canceled. You're able to pre-filter that way. Once you've set your filtering feature to how you would like it, you would click search and that will pare down this, this whole list that we have here. Um, if you do log in, we do get calls about this often like, oh, I don't see the authorization I'm expecting to see. Please don't forget that you can page over and most likely will have to if you're a larger agency um, to view all the details. Once you are at this screen, you can see the member name. 
first and last. And if you guys recall, if you hover over the headers and you have that arrow, this is what we would consider sortable data. So you can change by date. Let's see if you wanna see all of your oldest um, authorizations that you have in your system or the most recent authorizations, you can sort by date. However, that would be best usable for you. Um, we have your authorization number here updated. Which, so your authorization status, your payer. Again, now it's pretty limited, but eventually, hopefully we're gonna add more. Um, the program will be listed here. Total units authorized, units used, and percent of units remaining. So these portions are going to be really effective and really useful in about six months. Um, the authorization count. So we get a direct feed directly from DCH with, author with authorization information. So we get the number, the member, the HIC fix code, and the total authorized units. As claims function through the system to be claimed from DCH, this authorization use or the units used number will adjust according to the claims. Currently, there's plenty of authorizations that were active prior to people using the system. So your units used number is gonna be a little bit off until you get a new authorization for that member. So long-term, that will be a really useful function. You'll be able to track and trend and see who's gonna need a new authorization soon. If you need to put in a request, um, just be aware in the beginning that will not be as helpful. Um, but you know, use case, throwing it out there. If you get in here and you organize your units used or your percent of units remaining and you pull your everyone with 10% left, you know that you will have to look at those members to see if they need to be reauthorized. Once you are in this screen, you are able to expand the authorization information here by just clicking on it, not using the three dots that time, but it gives you I mean, similar information, but a little bit more detail. That way you can view the provider agency, again, the auth number. So if you're looking for um, more details about that authorization, this is where you will find that. And again, because this is a demo environment, you won't have all the details that you can see here, but once you are live in the system, you will see that there's a wealth of information on this screen for you. Lindsay, a question we, we did have come up was, um, and I don't think I missed it, but you searched by name. Is there a way to search by Medicaid ID of a member to pull them up or is it primarily by name and then narrow by Medicaid ID? So in this, for authorization screen, it is just by name. Okay. However, if you search by name and you have 18 John Smiths, then you can, you know, view the Medicaid ID here under in the column. But you cannot search for Medicaid ID in this filter. Let me go ahead and answer the next one too, Brittany. If if a caregiver happens to forget to clock in and clock out, there is a way for the providers on their administrative portal to update that with appropriate reason code so they know to clock in or clock out and, and make that correction. The same thing would be if there is, a, you know, a problem with the phone or whatever else. So the provider does have the ability to do that on their administrative portal. Okay, go ahead, Lindsay, sorry. No, no problem. Um, Brittany, any other questions you wanna address now? We have one that goes back to registration, but if we wanna get all the way through, we can revisit that one. Yeah, let's get all the way through just so we hit everything. And guys, just to follow up, if we can get the questions recorded at the end and if we miss answering it, we can um, answer it at a later time. I can email back with all of you. I'll share my email at the end. Uh, okay, so the next tab you'll have access to as a case manager admin is the member tab. And there's a couple of different functions that you're gonna do from this member tab. Um, just like before, you have your filtering options up here at the top. You can uh, search by first and last name. In this screen, you are able to search by their Medicaid ID. I don't think we're doing social in Georgia. Um, just so that everyone is aware, this is a multi-state solution. So there are some functions that are available for other states that are not live in Georgia. So if you see something that looks totally foreign to you, probably not for Georgia. <laughs> Um, you can search by date of birth, you can search by member ID, and also your active or inactive status. Once you've determined who you are trying to look for, look at, you can select the three dots here to the right. Let's see, we're going to open up Ms. Rochelle Lopez, or Mr., sorry, Rochelle Lopez. We're going to open up their details, and you can get a couple different pieces of information from the screen. 
you've got your general information um, that you get, you know, your name, the last four of the social, okay, so Georgia does do part of that, the Medicaid ID, the gender, and the date of birth. Um, you should have an emergency contact loaded here. Their address, this is an important piece because this is where the care is supposed to be taking place. Um, payer subscriptions, this just means which payer the member is um, utilizing for their care. Any notes will go in here. Um, so if you're taught, well, I, we're gonna revisit the notes section, but there are notes that you're able to put in that your case managers are able to put in and caregivers are able to communicate through the notes section, but we're gonna revisit that in a little bit. Um, documents are not live in Georgia, referring physician. Um, that may populate in Georgia. Honestly, I'm not sure and I apologize, but I can get confirmation and let you all know. Um, this is the big ticket item here for this members tab. Um, linked users. So we get a lot of questions about case management. How do my case managers get access to view their members? Well, this is how, through the linked users. If you have, we are in Mr. Rochelle Lopez. Um, he has one, two, three, four, five linked users to his account. Um, two have been delinked or they have not accepted for whatever reason. But currently, Jay Schnur, R. Chandra, and Andre are able to view their information. They are all case managers. If you want to delink, like say, let's say Jay Schnur has left the company, you don't want him to have access to this member anymore, you can just unlink the user. You can also send messages from this area and we will talk again about the message feature in a little bit. If you want to add a linked user, if you have someone who's new to your company and they want to have access to this member, you use this little plus mark down here. And these are all the members that you have to pick from. You can search, let's see, we'll do, hmm, search. Okay, so no users are associated to be linked, but let's go through, and again, we are, in demo, so things are gonna look a little different, but let's say <laughs> you are adding a case manager to use. These are the case managers that you case managers, I'm sorry, that you have at your disposal. You can link anyone within your current company. If you have someone coming into your company and they're brand new, you're gonna add them on the next tab. I apologize, I misspoke. This is how you link existing case managers to a member. And it's very simple. It's just what you would think. You would click link. Then Divya would then have access to view Mr. Lopez's information. Any questions here? Okay. The next tab that we have here is the users tab. So these are all of your case managers. Um, you have their basic information, their username, first name, last name, phone number, email and their role. So there's a couple different roles they'd be able to have. They can have an admin, case manager, admin, and actual case manager. If you want to alter or send messages to the case managers, then you can send messenger to user here, reset password if need be, unlink from your company from here, or you can open up their full details. And that gives you, you know, their email number, basic information for that user and you can also do, 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 edit their user roles. So right now, Mr. Holman is set as a provider admin and a case manager admin. If you wanted to add him as a case manager as well, you would simply select and save. And at that point, Mr. Holman would get a notification on his side of letting, letting him know that he has then been added as a case manager. If you have a new case manager joining your company, or if you are just getting registered and just getting started and need to add your case managers to your dashboard, this is where you would use the plus sign here. You would search. And if they're brand new, you should get this message. No user can be found. To register the new user, you're going to go and fill out the sheet here. And just like the error says, password will be randomly generated and the user will be invited to join. So you would put in their information, first and last name, their username, mobile phone number, email. If that, if their members have been approved for IVR, that's where that would go. 
um, the type of aid that they will be. In this demo environment, we only have other. Um, but if for some reason there's other types of aids that you want to add, then you can do the drop down and select, I believe there's CNAs or different things. I'm not sure if that's active in Georgia or not. But you would do the drop down and add the personal support aid type, add their date of birth. If you guys have an internal ID, social, um, anything with an asterisk, just like any other portal that is required to move forward. Anything else is uh, nice to have. If you have it and want to add it in for your reporting functions, that's fine. Um, role, case manager, case manager admin, you would simply click which one you want to add this new user as. Uh, let's see, you can do your effective start and end date, address, and you would click invite new user. Once you invite that new user, an email is going to be sent to your case manager. And that email contains the next steps for that case manager. They will have to accept the invitation and create their own portal. And that process is very similar to joining any portal. They will click on the link, they will go and put in their own information and they will have access to the members that you link them to from there. So again, just for review, because this is very important, to add case managers to your agency. And when you first register, you will have to add all of your case managers. You go to users, you hit the plus button here, you put in their email, we'll do this one, add. see if they are present in your system already. If they're brand new, they shouldn't be, and you will be pushed to form to fill out with their basic information and invite new user. This is also the same process that you will follow um, for your secondary case manager admins. So you'll have your primary case manager admin who's gotten your agency registered, and then you'll probably want to uh, assign another case manager admin you know, to work in your stead if you ever need a backup or something so that they have the same access that you do um, to maintain the business while you are out. Any questions about this screen here? Brittany, anything pertinent in the chat that I'm not able to see? Um, we have one or two questions related to um, uh, just this, like getting some admin signed up, but I think it can wait, getting some case managers signed up, but I think it can wait as well. So make sure we get through everything. Okay, great. So the next tab that we are going to, this is reports. Um, the case manager admins are able to access these reports and do a little more manipulation. Act just case managers, I don't believe, are able to view these reports. But the reports are just what you would assume they are. We have a re recipients list. This gives you a full exportable version of the recipients in your care. And it has, let's see, we've got, you know, your recipient name, date of birth, gender, recipient address, recipient phone number, and we have a page over here, sorry, um, emergency contact name and contact phone number. If you have, let's say you have a couple, you want to sort out your recipient list by a certain program or by um, region, by location, for whatever reason, you can select just a few on this side here and click apply. That will parse it down for you and you can export that and use that for what you will. When you're done with those, you can deselect on this side, go through and select your others. So you can use this tool um, in a couple different ways, depending on how you want to view your recipient list. This is exportable data, as I had said, to export, you just click export and you can choose which format you're exporting into, PDF, Excel, or XLSX. You can also zoom in, zoom out from this screen. Um, if you're anything like me, you're gonna wanna zoom in a lot so that you can actually see the tiny text. Um, but there's a couple different ways you can use this report. Back to the reports tab, then we have the visit detail. Anytime you're pulling anything regarding visits, it's gonna take a little extra time just because we're pulling a lot of data and a lot of information. But if you pull your, let's see if we can pull something applicable in our demo environment. You pick your date range on this side and you click apply. And what would happen, um, your visits would show up over here, similar format to what you're seeing on the dashboard, but the difference here is that you're able to export the visits. Um, just like before, you can export to PDF, Excel, or XLSX. Um, I'm not sure why, potentially because it's the demo environment, 
um, it won't pull that report for me, but you'll get the same information as what you were seeing under the visits tab, as far as date, time, scheduled, clocked in, clocked out, member information and caregiver information. It'll look similar to this, but it's in an exportable format under your reports tab. And so this is the visit detail report that has you know, more detail, probably the HICS PICS code and the address information. And then if you pull just your visit report, it's a little bit different. Let's see what we can pull. Um, similar to the other tabs we were using over here, you have your filtration tools to the left. Um, you do your start and end date. If you wanna zero in on a specific recipient, you can pick one or two recipients or however many you'd like. Or if you want to, if you were more interested in viewing what a caregiver was up to for a specific date range, you can pick by caregiver. Um, if you want to narrow down and really pull, I want to see all the missed visits that this particular caregiver had in the month of, or so far in November, then you can really specify and narrow down what you're looking for and click apply. And that will pull the visit information over here to a table format. Again, you can view the caregiver information, recipient name, the code, address, visit start date, end date, actual. So this is the scheduled start and end date. This is the actual start and end date. And the difference there is this is what is put on the schedule ahead of time. So this caregiver was supposed to be there. Again, demo environment, <laughs> let's see, 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And it looks like they clocked in at 2.26 and clocked out at 2.32. So with a visit, duration of five minutes. Um, and then we have their billable, billable start and end time there. Scroll over a little bit and the status. So this was a completed visit. Um, a lot of this is self-explanatory. Um, completed late means that it was a completed visit, but they were late based on the schedule and then missed visits. Any questions here? Oh, and just like the others, I apologize. Just like the others, you can export this information into your PDF, Excel, or SLXS based on what you are using it for. Great. Any questions on the reporting feature? Okay. So for provider agency, this is kind of like your profile information. Um, it gives you information on your agency, the name, the short name, the short name is what's gonna be visible up here. So if you're a member of multiple case management agencies, you can change your short name to something that makes sense to you. Um, your default time zone, address, you know, basic information, tax ID, NPI, taxonomy, um, all that information that should auto populate because we get the feed directly from the state. So if you get in and you see something that doesn't make sense to you, that is something to report to the conduit call center, which will go over that call number before the presentation is over. Um, payers, this is just who you are contracted to um, submit claims through or to who, your contract, who your members are contracted through. So we have GDCH right now. Um, as I said before, we're hoping to have some more CMOs available in the, Sure, long term. <laughs> so you'll have more than one to choose from and different contractors. The next tab we have here is just the link to the training materials. Um, if you have never been to the training site, once you are registered, I absolutely recommend that you do so. Um, you'll click on go to training, it will take you to the overall NetSmart training site. And there we will have um, multiple training videos, the user guide, it is not there yet, um, but we are hoping to have it up there loaded within the next week, the full user guide so you have something to reference. Um, we also plan to have video tutorials added for case management specifically, and um, a couple other training materials uh, like little PowerPoints um, that we've segmented out. So if you know that you're specifically wanting to log on, like, oh, I really forgot how to link a user to a recipient, there will most likely be some kind of shorthand, shorter version of a training material that just focuses on that linking feature for you. And that's how you would get there. You'll go to training um, settings. That's just pretty basic. And then you can log out. And you know, based on HIPAA reasons, you wanna log out anytime you leave your computer. <laughs> but, okay, so any questions? Brittany, do you wanna run the question piece or do you want me to click over to the chat? No, that's okay. Um, I'll start from the ones that we haven't been able to address. Uh, and, and Brian, some might come to you, uh, unless you want to handle them, but I'm happy to ask them. Okay, go, go for it. 
great. So the first one is how do we change what type of registration? So it seems that an agency registered as a provider instead of a case management. So your the, the reason why we have you register using your tax ID and payer provider ID and your zip code is because that is linked or that is connected with the taxonomy that says that you're a case management agency. So you shouldn't have an issue. So but for example, it if like they, there is one. <laughs> well, it sounds like if they provide both caregiving services and case management services, if they've registered with their caregiving uh, Medicaid ID, they also need to register with their case management Medicaid ID, and then they should be able to toggle between the two. Does that seem correct? Yeah. Hey, Brittany, in, in the yes, scenario sir. where that happens, they may want to go ahead and write the EVV mailbox, and we'll put that up in a minute um, after we're Perfect. through this presentation. You shouldn't have too many folks that are case management agencies and also direct service providers. So uh, I'd like to kind of take a look at that myself. So if they don't mind emailing me, that would be great. Perfect. Um, the next question we have, which might go to you, Brent, how do we remedy the unmatched status to a matched status? I think this led on to one that you answered previously. So that that's, yeah, that's a provider question and not really a case management question, but the, the system does rematch every hour, or you can go up and click the rematch button once you've made your edits, and it should clear those um, errors if you've had them. Okay. Sounds like I know what I'm talking about, doesn't it, Lindsay? Yeah, it's almost like you've done this before. <laughs> um, we, we received two questions related to linking users. Um, so do we have to link e link users to each member? Uh, case managers can have upwards of like 70 members per their caseload. Yes, if you want that case manager to be able to view each recipient, then you have to link each one. But you only have to do it once. So it's a little bit of a burden in the beginning, but once you've done it, you're done. Um, and then there's a question related to, will a guide um, be sent out that discuss the, discusses the various roles and what they're allowed to do? Should that be covered in the case management guide when that comes out? Yes, that will be covered in the user guide that we should be um, putting on that training site that you access by the training tab here and go to training. Um, and that will be coming out hopefully by the end of next week. Perfect, next question is, how often do you have to check or use this case management portal? So that's one for me. It's not it's not mandated in policy as of this point about how often you have to use it. This is simply a tool in your toolbox to make you a better and more efficient case manager. I think that I have caught all the questions um, that we didn't catch as we were going through the demos. I guess we can give it another second or so to see. Um, we had one just pop in after the initial registration and someone is authorized to be an admin, will they have the ability to add case managers or link um, and unlink members? So once you have registered your agency as a case manager admin, you're going to log in and go to your users tab. And to add your case managers to your agency, you're going to click this plus button here. You're going to search. So let's see. I'll do this real quick. I think we're okay on time right now. Search, and then if they are not a user, which they shouldn't be, if you haven't registered them yet, you would fill out this form here, invite new user, and that will trigger an invitation to the email that you put here, to the email that you put here with steps for your caregiver to, or for your case manager to follow to um, accept their invitation. And, and could that user be created as another admin? Like, are, are they allowed to create other admins? Yes, absolutely. So when you do, I should have left that screen up, I'm so sorry. Let me see. When you invite a user, you, you choose their role here. So if you wanna add another case manager admin, you select there. If it's um, not an admin and a case manager, then you select case manager. If they do both capacities, you can select both. Okay, great, thank you. We're back to the bottom of our questions, if there are any more. Lindsay, do you wanna switch back to the other presentation and let's run through those last couple of slides real quick? Yes, absolutely, here we go. So I think this was where we left off. Yes, there's a live demonstration and Brian, I'll kick it back to you. Great, yeah, and the administration, administrator role is a super user, so it would have the capacity 
to see everybody. Is that correct, Lindsay? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Hey, Edie, good to, good to talk to you. It's been a while. Um, so also, this is the different uh, ways you can contact us. So there is the Georgia Call Center, and I really do encourage if you need help with training or registration to go ahead and call the call center at the 833-701-0012 number or email. There's also a live chat, interesting sign of the times in 2021. We get as many emails as we do phone calls. Um, so emailing is absolutely fine. If you want to, you know, it expedite your response, make sure that you put your agency name. If you're talking about a specific member, put in their ID or, I mean, the Medicaid ID for your agency or the MPI for your agency um, and your contact email and callback number. Go ahead and make sure you have all that available. You'd be surprised some of the emails we get that are just like a question and there's no specific information in there. And then I have to write back or the call center has to write back and says, hey, who is this? Um, because their email address won't even have the, the, it'll just be like a Gmail address. And so we won't even know what agency it is that is contacting us. So make sure you give us that information up front because it, it expedites you and our kind of response time. Next slide. Is there a next slide or is that the last slide? Oh, there is another town hall meeting like this one. It will be this one as well. We do record all of our town halls so you can go back and listen to this. And it is available on our website along with this presentation. So you don't have to really, you know, take pictures of the actual slides. Um, there, that's it. I think we're, we're through the questions. So unless there's any other questions that we haven't answered, um, we've put in the email, the other email box, which basically goes to me and DCH staff. Um, you can utilize that one as well. We'll pause for just a second, but if we don't hear any other, not seeing any other questions in the chat, I want to thank everybody for joining us. I want to hope everybody has a great Thanksgiving holiday break. Um, thank you for continuing to be engaged and thank you, Lindsay, for all the great information today for case managers. We certainly appreciate it. Thank you, everybody.